Hi, I'm Deacon Dan Lowry, and uh, this is the third of seven sessions on the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes drawn from chapter five of Matthew's Gospel. And again, we're looking at the Beatitudes through the perspective of a remarkable uh, group of men, the early church fathers, men who lived in, from the late first century through the beginning of the, uh, to the end of the seventh century, in fact. And they had a lot to say about the Beatitudes. They had a lot to say about the Beatitudes that might change our perspective about, about this path in the disciples' journey. Uh, today we're going to talk about the first two of the Beatitudes. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the second Beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, uh, for they shall be comforted. So four insights uh, pertaining to these foundational Beatitudes, the first two Beatitudes. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? What does it mean to mourn? First insight, our understanding of what it means to be poor in spirit may be too broad. We tend to think of it as being humble in every aspect of our life. The early church fathers were way more specific, much more specific in fact. To them, being poor in spirit involved emptying ourselves of sin. They uh, recognized this first beatitude as talking about sin. So that's the first insight. The second insight, our typical understanding of this first beatitude, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? Our typical understanding may be too thin. Yes, even if we imagine that the first beatitude to be poor in spirit is talking about sin, we tend to understand it as the manifestations or the symptoms of sins. But the early church fathers went deeper. They had a very robust understanding of what they termed root sin. To be poor in spirit is to very forthrightly, very honestly address the root sins in our lives. And they tended to understand these root sins as idols, as the worship of something that is other than God. So root sin, what did it refer to? Well, first materialism, the worship of things, the worship of stuff, and the worship of experiences of one kind or another, unhealthy experiences. They also saw pride as a root sin, that's the worship of self. And a third root sin that they would speak to is vanity the worship of what others think and say about us. So that first insight again, uh, it may be that the our understanding of poverty of spirit, what it means to be poor in spirit, uh, is a bit too broad. It's talking about sin. But that second understanding, that second insight that they had is that our understanding may be too thin. It's talking about root sin. A third insight. Our understanding, our common understanding of what it means to mourn may again be too broad. They connected the first beatitude and the second beatitude. To mourn is to mourn the foregoing of those idols in our lives that are referred to in the first beatitude. We must empty ourselves of these root sins to the point that it hurts, to the point that we mourn. And the fourth, the fourth insight from the early church fathers. The implications of these first two beatitudes are profound indeed. The life of the disciple is a life of kenosis. It's a life of emptying ourselves. It's a life of emptying ourselves to the extent we can, always in response to God's invitation, always with the help of God's grace. It's to empty ourselves of our root sin, even to the point of mourning that which we are called to forego. So uh, perhaps a, a, a few reflection questions on these first uh, four or first two beatitudes. First, have I adequately acknowledged the role that unhealthy attachments play in my life? Second, do I need to mourn my foregoing of these attachments? Have I really come to some sense of resolution that I am committed to the life of the discipleship. Third, into what relationship is Jesus inviting me? Is he indeed inviting me to into a life of discipleship? And fourth, what will this invitation mean in my life? What will this require of me? 
We'll see you next time.